All right. Oh, yeah. kitties. That was beautiful. Hello, James. He's always uh, he's always such a pleasure to talk to. Yeah. yeah. All right. So much, so, so much knowledge. What's next, guys? Trivia. I think this is this is a very just, this is a very Justin episode. It's it's nice. Uh, he had he had to leave early last time, so I think I think this is making up for it, really. <sighs> so, mm -hmm. SBTL classic poll was Pangea yes, Online yes. three, and Justin is gonna ride this one solo. Yes, classic SBTL. Thank you very much. I'll just uh, pull up the script, which is here. I Hurry up! Ah! Here it is. Here it is. Ah! Okay. Yes, this is uh, a a segment from Pangea Online Three by S. L. Rowland. Uh, book three is available on Audible.com as well. Uh, you can check it out there. Um, and uh, I'll just jump right into it. One year after the events of Magic and Mayhem, uh, this is the beginning of the book. Um, so there's no real background, but I will tell you that Easel is a 20-ish male. He's the protagonist. Uh, and Alicia is a 20-ish female. And um, she is the love interest of Easel. Mm -hmm. Here we go. <clears throat> A flaming arrow whizzes by my ear. There's a warm pulse as my haptic suit attempts to mimic the sensation of the imbued arrow Alicia just fired. The arrow lodges in the eye socket of the orc before me, cutting off his battle cry mid-grunt as he falls forward and his HP drops to zero. Nice shot, I tell Alicia as I bury my axe into the skull of the nearest orc. The broad-jawed, green-skinned barbarian's eyes stay wide even in death as I pull my weapon free and kick the body to the ground. Another arrow sails by me. This one explodes upon impact, and bolts of lightning arc from one orc to another, stunning four of them in place. I take a step back and equip Staff of the Water Ancients, which boosts all my magical abilities. I cast Haunted Earth, and roots rip through the ground, rooting the stunned orcs in place for even longer. Next, I use Binding Thorns. Leaves and vines sprout from the roots, entangling the orcs further. Alicia continues to barrage the orcs that funnel down the narrow pass with arrows imbued with fire and ice. The vines cinch together tighter as thorns erupt, ripping into orc flesh and dropping their HP in chunks. Using my last bit of mana, I cast Sunbeam, and a wave of light engulfs the orcs. They scream as they struggle against the vines, trying to escape the burning light. Finish them off! I yell as I work my way up the pass, switching to my mace and smashing orcs off the narrow, snow-covered pass into the depths below. Alicia's red eyes flare with intensity as she knocks her next arrow. Her dark, charcoal-colored fingers wrap around the bowstring, and she pulls it back. Purple energy pulses through her ornately carved ivory bow, working its way down the string and onto the arrow itself. The tip of the arrow glows purple, then black, and dark energy coils around the shaft. She releases the arrow, and it soars toward the orcs as Sunbeam's last ray fades away. The orcs turn to run, each one with only a sliver of health remaining. The arrow morphs into pure dark energy and separates into four smaller arrows. They track down the fleeing orcs like homing missiles. Each arrow hits, and dark tendrils wrap around the orcs, sucking the last of their HP away. Tiny orbs of darkness fly back to Alicia, dissipating into her body and healing her for the small amount of damage she took earlier. With her dark skin and purple cloak, she stands out prominently against the snowy landscape. She tucks a strand of black hair behind her elven ears and winks at me. Bring, Bring us home, Easel. Oh, sorry. Oh, please. No, no, no. No, a no, no. Please. I don't know why I just assumed it was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is perfect. This is, this is, this is a, this is, Annie's joining. She tucks a strand of black hair behind her elven ears and winks at me. Bring us home, Easel. The last of the orcs trudge down the pass, carrying massive shields formed out of crude iron. The jagged edges function as bludgeoning weapons. Three orcs walk side by side, their shields pressed firmly together in a barricade. I only have a few moments to make a decision. With their current formation, my mace is practically useless. I cycle through all my weapons, but none of them can pierce the shield wall. With my mana depleted, magical abilities are a no-go as well. I need to get behind them somehow. Alicia, sweetheart, can you shoot a gravity arrow overhead? There's no shame in relying my, on my partner to finish the job. 
Sweetheart? Really, Easel? Are we that couple now? <laughs> she laughs, and the arrow clicks slightly as she knocks it. There's a thrum as she releases. The air shimmers slightly around the arrow as it soars overhead. An unlucky bird gets caught in its gravitational pull as it's sucked in. It squawks as the arrow's magical properties keep it pressed against the shaft at an awkward angle. I equip Grappler, one of my most unique weapons that I bought on my first day in the Steam World. It has served me well over the years. Gary, why don't you take the uh, uh, system? Oh, muted. Item, the grappler, ray gun, plus seven strength. Ability, grapple, fires a grappling hook and attaches to the first object it hits. 30 second cooldown. You'll not get away that easy, bucko. It's a beautiful weapon with a rotating barrel. One barrel shoots ray beams and the other fires a grappling hook. A small tube on the top swirls with lime green smoke. The ray gun doesn't work here in a fantasy world, but the grappling hook does. I fire the hook and it wraps around Alicia's arrow. The arrow's properties mean that my weight doesn't pull the arrow off course. Instead, it jerks me forward. I activate the grappling ability and the cord retracts, launching me into the air and over the three orcs. I let, grow, go, I let go of the grappler and land with a thud in the packed snow behind, behind the orcs. <clears throat> orcs attempt to turn, but their shields are lodged together. Before they have a chance to disengage, I equip my elvish battle spear. I have just enough mana to use Rapid Strike, allowing me to place three attacks in quick succession at the ba base of their necks. The critical strikes are enough to one-shot the three orcs. They collapse underneath the weight of their shields, and I toss the bodies over the edge of the pass along with the shields. Nowadays, I don't keep loot unless it's particularly valuable or something I can use. I don't spend as much time in Pangaea as I used to. I've leveled up nicely over the past year, but I don't grind. I still honor my streaming contract, entertaining my fans several times a week. A partnership with VR Haptics is the only reason I was able to get out of the boxes in the first place, so I feel I owe it to them even though I could buy my way out of the contract if I wanted. I spend most of my time beta testing full immersion in the Broken Lands with Buzz and Grayson, but this is where I get quality gaming time with Elysia. Her busy schedule with school and her internship doesn't leave a lot of free time for her, but we come back to the Mordekin Mountains when we can back to where it all started. My haptic suit is top of the line. It mimics smells, textures, and the weight of holding a weapon, but it's nothing compared to full immersion. Not bad, handsome. Alicia flashes me a smile. I kiss her on the cheek. Couldn't have done it without you. She laughs and rolls her eyes. <laughs> oh, come on. You're Easel Allen, the kid from the boxes who won the developer's tournament. I'm sure you would have figured something out. The sarcasm drips from her voice. She walks past me up the pass to where the orcs come from, and I follow. The view from atop the pass is spectacular. Forests, rivers, and towns pepper the landscape in every direction. The town square where the main portal empties players into this world is nothing more than a tiny dot from our position. Alicia pulls a fur blanket from her satchel and spreads it on the snow. She takes a seat and uncorks a bottle filled with red liquid. Substance, fire whiskey, buff, plus two percent attack for the next hour. She pours some in a cup and hands it to me before pouring herself one. She raises her glass. To us. I clink my glass against hers. To us, I echo. I drink the fire whiskey and my haptic suit goes warm around my throat and slowly trails down to my stomach. It's more of a symbolic gesture than anything. We don't need the 2% attack buff since we outlevel most of the enemies in this part of the map, but it's a reminder of our first adventure together, when she took a chance on me and we raided a dungeon. Are you excited about your trip? She puts the fire whiskey away back into her bag and moves closer. I am. I take her hand in mine. But uh, if I'm being honest, I'm also a bit nervous. This will be the first time I've been back to the boxes since the developer's tournament. Yeah, but it will mean so much to them. To see that someone just like them made something of themselves. I'm supposed to give a talk to the kids at the orphanage where I grew up. I'll also be making a donation to help with their schooling. 
there's a lot of pressure in going back, mostly from myself. I want to tell these kids that they can do anything, to do my best to inspire them. But the truth is that I don't feel like I made it out on my own. It's not quite the same, though. I, I had luck, and then I had you, and Buzz, and Grayson, and in the end, I had my dad. Without all of that, I, I wouldn't have stood a chance. She squeezes my hand, and a fiery and her fiery red eyes burn with passion. That doesn't make it any less special. Buzz and Grayson, you met them in the mines. That developer's chest, you found it in the mines. Yes, your dad helped you in the end, but you had already made it out of the boxes and were living in Civic City by the time that happened. I shake my head, but I can't fight back the smile. Ah, you're right. You always are. We enjoy, the, we enjoy the view for a while longer, watching the sun set over the surrounding mountain peaks. It's easy to see why people love Pangea Online so much. There's so much more to it than just fighting and leveling. Where else can you watch a watercolor sky this beautiful? Maybe at Pangea headquarters, but there aren't a lot of places in the real world with a view like this. Alicia's eyes glaze over for a moment as she checks her notifications. Time to go. I have a bit of work to finish before bed tonight. She gives my hand a gentle squeeze. We gather our items and teleport back to the town square. I should get some rest, too. Tomorrow is a big day in the Broken Lands, and then there's my talk with the orphanage the next day. It's going to be a busy week. Bam! Pangea! Yeah. Dude. Pangea Online 3. Pangea will always hold a special place in my heart because it is the first Sound Booth Theater audiobook narrated by someone other than myself. Mm. And that is really cool to me. Big milestone. That is really yeah. cool. Like when yeah, you're, I was, I was oh, wait, really so lucky. What we're looking at here is yeah. book one. The uh, so, um, SL Mr. Stephen Rowland got a new cover for book one, and we just, uh, I, I think it just got replaced on Audible. Mm -hmm. But this cover's dope. Yeah, the uh, look on that like orc creature's face is great. He's just like, yeah. oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, guys, if you want to uh, go back. Go back to the beginnings of Mr. Justin Thomas James' career. Um, check out the series, and he's 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 stuck with it this entire time. Um, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure working with Stephen. Stephen is a an absolutely fantastic author, and uh, I really enjoy working. It's it's just a very natural style. Uh, I love the way he he does combat. And um, so to be paired with him as my my first author working with Sound Booth Theater, I, I couldn't have been luckier. Um, he also has uh, the Sentence to Troll, Sentence to Troll series, uh, which is narrated by Eric Martin, who is a, a fantastic narrator as well. I highly recommend you you check that out on Audible as well. Um, yeah, anything by Stephen Rowland, go check yeah. it out. He's also he's also got his own. Thank you. Yes, Stephen. Oh, they got a lot of energy tonight. Lot shut of up, Proud. Shut up. We're trying to talk. <laughs> Jesus. Also, check out his Patreon. Uh, um, he has a Patreon, uh, SL Roland. Uh, so if you'd like to support uh, Stephen and his authorly endeavors, uh, please, you can do so there. Okay.